Welcome to my YouTube channel Modi Mechanical Engineering Tutorials. In this video, I would like to explain in details on two uh, objective questions and answer on material science and metallurgy subject. So here that will be the part number four and the most important 20 question list. So let us start with the question number one and that will be Recrystallization temperature can be lowered by Option A. Purification of metal Option B. Grain refinement Option C. Working at lower temperature and Option D. All of the above. So in these questions, the recrystallization temperature can be lowered by purification of metal, grain refinement and working at lower temperature so that will be considering as a right answer is all of the above the next question which is used to predict quenching reaction in steels option a isothermal transformation diagram option b iron iron carbide equilibrium diagram option c continuous cooling transformation diagram and option D logarithmic scale. So in these questions an isothermal transformation or you can say IT is a tool to used by heat treaters to calculate quenching reactions into the steels. So in IT diagram can also be called as a TTT diagram. So the right answer is that will be A isothermal transformation diagrams that will be used to predict quenching reactions into a steel materials. The next question, austenizing of samples for TTT diagram is done at which temperature? Option A at room temperature, option B below melting point, option C above eutectoid temperature and option D above boiling temperature. So in these questions a large number of small samples of same materials are collected and austenized in a furnace above a eutectoid temperature. So that will be above 723. Then it is rapidly cooled at desired temperature below the eutectoid temperature. So just you can see the TTT diagram. So first of all hit the number of samples into the category of austenitic phase. So just you can see this is the temperature line or you can say you take toid temperature. So almost it will be around 723 degree centigrade. So above that it will be a gamma phase or you can say gamma austenite phase. So that will be the right answer is at above you take toid temperature. The next question, isothermal transformation of eutectoid steel between 723 degree centigrade and 550 degree centigrade produces which microstructure? So option A, perlite, option B, benite, option C, ferrite and option D, cementite. So into the isothermal transformations or you can say into a TTT diagram of eutectoid steels between 723 degree centigrade and 550 degree centigrade that will be a formation of perlitic microstructure. So just you can see onto the TTT diagram. So this is the range of the 723 to 550. So just you can see at around or you can say just below the 700 degree centigrade. So it will be the formation of coarse perlitic structure. And if it will be around 550 to 600. So it will be the formation of fine perlitic structure. So in general form of this temperature range in between 550 to 723. So it will be a perlitic region. So it forms perlitic microstructure. So as from the temperature range on TTT diagram of eutectoid steels, it forms perlite. So option A. The next question, 
Hot quenching of u tectoid steels in austenitic conditions result in formation of Option A. Perlite Option B. Benite Option C. Ferrite and Option D. Cementite So in this question, if the u tectoid steels in austenitic conditions are hot quench in 550 degree centigrade to 300 degree centigrade range. So, they are isothermally transformed into the benitic structure. So, just you can see in hot quenching. So, this is the region around or you can say below the 550 to 300. So, that will be the second part just below of that fine polaritic structure. So, it will be the formation of upper benite and the temperature range around 300 degrees centigrade that will be lower benite structure. So basically hot quenching it will be having a range around 300 to 550 degree centigrade. So between this temperature range in general form of the TTT diagram it will be making a benite structure. So the right answer is benite. So option B benite. The next question. Benite in iron carbon alloys has a which kind of structure? Option A dendritic structure, option B non lamellar structure, option C linear structure, and option D hexagonal structure. So, in a benitic in iron carbon alloys can be defined as an austenitic decomposition product. So, it has a non-lamellar eutectoid structure. So, basically it will be contains with ferrite and cementite or you can say Fe3C. So, benite in iron carbon alloys that will be having a non-lamellar kind of eutectoid structure. So, right answer is option B. The next, for hardening of steel by quenching, the steel is cooled in option a furnace option b steel air option c oil bath and option d cooling tower so basically after the heating and soaking or you can say holding of the steels it must be properly cooled and the steel is quenched into a room temperature with a water or oil bath so that will be you can say that the rapid cooling process. So here for a quenching process it will be utilization of rapid cooling with water or oil bath. So basically this furnace cooling it will be possible into annealing process and still air that will be into a normalizing process. So by the quenching process it always followed a rapid cooling by water or oil bath. So option C that will be the right answer. The next, how does the rate of cooling affect the hardness of steel? Option A, faster cooling result in lower hardness. Option B, slow cooling result in high hardness. Option C, fast cooling result in high hardness. And option D, no change is being found. So basically hardness depends on to the nature and the properties of quenching medium. So basically it was found that the faster cooling result into the greater hardness of the steels and slow cooling that will be lowers the hardness. So if you want to make a harder structure, so that will be requirement of a rapid cooling. So generally it will be utilization as a water and oil. So that will be making a good hard structure. So for this, that will be the fast cooling result into a higher hardness. The next, hardenability of material can be measured using which test? Option A, Jomini and Quench test. Option B, Charfi. Option C, Rockwell. And Option D, Isod. So basically, the hardenability of the materials can be measured using a Jomini and Quench test test method where charfi and isor impact testing methods whereas a rockwell is a hardness testing scales or you can say methods so if you want to learn about a hardenability 
so that will be requirement of a Jomini and quench test so that will be option a the next question which of the following is an alloy of lead option a vitalium option b brass option c enver option d solder so basically solder is an alloy of lead so the right answer is option d the next Substitutional alloy and interstitial alloys are types of alloys. Option A true, option B false. So the above statement is absolutely right. So the substitutional alloys and interstitial alloys are a type of alloy. Because substitutional in what? The both the metals of A and B that will be having the same atomic size. So it will be the formation of substitutional solid solutions where in case of the interstitial alloys one of the atomic size of solute and solvent that will be having a major difference so it will be the formation of interstitial alloy but that will be you can say that it will be a types of alloys because in both the cases the solute and solvent is being used to form a new materials so the substitutional alloy and interstitial are the types of alloys. So the right answer is option A. So the statement is true. The next, which of the following alloying elements increasing hardness? Option A, silicon. Option B, sulfur. Option C, nickel. And option D, titanium. So basically the presence of the sulfur that will be the tendency to increasing a hardness of the alloy by reacting with an iron to form a iron sulfide so for this for betterment of the hardness that will be depends on to the presence of the sulfur so the right answer is option b the next which of the following is a method of applying a protective zinc coating to the steel option a galvanizing Option B, glazing. Option C, hydroforming. And option D, metal punching. So in these questions, the galvanizing, which will be the process, and you can say that it will be a very famous process in which a zinc coating is applied over a steel or you can say iron sources to help the prevent of a corrosion. So the right answer is option A, galvanizing process. The next Heat treatment operations involving heating of the steels above the upper critical temperature and then cooling it into ash is known as option A annealing, option B tempering, option C os tempering and option D normalizing. So here the annealing that will be followed a furnace cooling in case of tempering so only possible after a quenching process so basically if you work for a hardness it will be present into the materials or you can say extra hardness it will be present into the materials then and then the tempering process it will be carried out for rearrangement of the structure so tempering is always followed by a quenching process where os tempering what happens that will be known as a intermediate cooling but normalizing that will be followed by a air cooling process so here the heat treatment operations involving heating of the steels above a upper critical temperature and then the cooling is into air so that will be known as a normalizing process so the right answer is option d the next Selection of material for a particular use is based on following consideration. Option A, service requirements. Option B, fabrication characteristics. Option C, cost. And option D, all of the above. So basically the selection of the material for particular use is used to work on to a service requirements, fabrication characteristics, and most important things that will be the cost so the all the three like a b and c that will be depends for selection of the materials so as per the question the right answer is all of the 
एबो सो ऑप्शन डी द नेक्स्ट लो कार्बन स्टील कैन बी हार्ड एंड बाय ऑप्शन ए हार्डनिंग ऑप्शन बी कार्बिराइजिंग एंड साइनाइडिंग ऑप्शन सी हिटिंग एंड क्विंचिंग इन ऑयल ऑप्शन डी ऑल ऑफ द एबो सो बेसिकली लो कार्बन स्टील कैन बी हार्ड एंड बाय कार्बिराइजिंग और यू कैन से साइनाइडिंग प्रोसेस सो द राइट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी कार्बिराइजिंग एंड साइनाइडिंग प्रोसेस द नेक्स्ट The carbon content of U-tech toyed with addition of alloying element will option A increase, option B remain unaffected, option C decrease, and option D none of the above. So basically, the carbon content of the U-tech toyed with addition of the alloying element that will be decrease. So the right answer is option C. The next question. The basic constituent of Hasle are option A aluminium copper, option B nickel molybdenum, option C nickel copper, and option D none of the above. So the basic constituents of Hasle are nickel and molybdenum. So that will be a right answer is option B. Then next question. Hardness of martensite is about option A RC sixty five, option B RC forty eight, option C RC thirty two, and option D RC eighty. So here RC that will be the measurement in terms of a Rockwell hardness number. So basically, the hardness of the martensite that will be having the highest value, or you can say that will be around a. 65 to 70, not around a 80. So that will be about most uh, important value, and that will be for RC 65 or 62 or 63. So here that will be the options that will be more relevant. That will be RC 65. So the right answer is option A. The next question. Heavy duty leaf and coil springs contains carbon of following order: option A, zero point two percent; option B, zero point five percent; option C, zero point eight percent; and option D, one percent. So basically, in heavy duty leaf and coil springs contains carbon around one percentage. So that will be in the category of high per eutectoid steel. so the right answer is option d so i hope you like this so if you like this then subscribe and share modi mechanical engineering tutorials thank you so much and keep watching